spam and hackers. What? Yeah, I pressed the button. <laughs> okay. Can we make my job to make sure? Good. No, thank you. So yeah, I'm, my name is Darren. Um, I work for uh, Cognizant, to, and um, we have uh, occasionally have time for side projects. And one of the side projects I worked on was uh, dealing with some uh, with a site that was getting a lot of uh, spam. Actually, uh, it was a uh, insurance, uh, uh, accounts receivable insurance, and they were getting hundreds of messages a day and maybe three or four a week that were legitimate. So it was really um, way, taking up a lot of time of their small office. So I had the chance to look into this as well as ha on my, uh, my, the personal site that I maintain, it's always having people trying to sign up for no good reason. And so today we'll, we'll look at the, uh, briefly cover the different types of attacks, how uh, following Drupal best practices can help, uh, some of the self-contained tools that you can uh, use on the site, and uh, commercial services, and opportunities to contribute and make things better. So the, one of the big uh, things that uh, well, that spammer, uh, hackers may, may try to do is take down a site with a distributed denial of service attack. That's uh, basically the, they just overwhelm it with your site with traffic so that it's uh, unable to, to, to be visited. Uh, another thing that, uh, that they'll do is uh, submit fake content, fake profiles, uh, as we were mentioning. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I haven't figured out every time what they're trying to accomplish with this, but um, I know there's links. Maybe they get paid by by the number of places they're able to get some some links. Or, and sometimes it's just outright scamming and hoping that somebody will click on a link, get uh, uh, some ransomware or, or something uh, in the, on their computer. Uh, another one is hijacking, where they they're going to try to take over your site uh, and use it to uh, exploit other machines uh, um, and visitors um, for uh, my, um, crypto mining and the ransom uh, attacks where they'll, they might try to take down your database and then uh, say if you pay us uh, we'll, it'll come back. So these are the the kinds of things that we need to, uh, that could happen to us if we don't have uh, protection. So some of the things uh, that uh, will help with this are, are built-in best practices in Drupal. You know, keep the security up updates uh, um, installed. Uh, fix your file permissions. Don't, don't uh, uh, have your uh, your core files uh, uh, writable by the web server. Uh, make sure that your settings file is not uh, writable. Set it to read only. Uh, error displays. Turn off, turn off the error displays on your production uh, live site so that they can't, uh, if there's an error, they don't, it doesn't uh, reveal anything about the, the vulnerabilities uh, on your site. Caching helps to prevent the the uh, denial of service attacks by reducing the the uh, number of times that Drupal has to render uh, uh, the same thing. Using a content delivery network, another good uh, um, thing to prevent uh, denial of service attack because uh, instead of all the traffic coming to to your site, it's hitting all the the uh, the proxies of your content delivery network. And uh, and only coming to your Drupal site if uh, there's something that the that's not already in the content delivery network. Uh, setting up your access controls correctly, making sure that users don't have more access than they need, uh, making sure that users can't uh, create accounts without approval unless uh, you have uh, some kind of social site where that might be necessary, and. Uh, then just monitor. Keep up with the, 
what's going on on your site, look at your logs, uh, and and uh, and check the, the Drupal.org where and the announcements, the articles that that are put up there to to help um, as uh, best practices are updated. So, in addition to the just regular best practices for Drupal, there are a couple of uh, self-contained tools you can install as Drupal modules that are somewhat effective. Uh, first one is the CAPTCHA. This is somewhat effective for when bots are trying to, to fill out forms on your site. I say somewhat effective because some bots can get past this uh, and there are a lot of uh, attacks that are using actual people nowadays. So that, that only goes uh, so far. The honeypot module is another thing you can install. The way this works is it uh, enforces a time, uh, a, a minimum amount of time between when a form can be, is loaded and when it's submitted. Because uh, if a form is submitted immediately after being loaded, that indicates that it wasn't a human that filled it in. The, it also adds uh, uh, a fake uh, field to, to your forms, so which uh, humans won't see, bots will. If it, that field is filled in, it rejects the submission because obviously that was not a human. That's about all that to, you've got for that you can do self-contained on your site. So to get better protection than that, we've got some commercial services to look at. Uh, ReCAPTCHA is from Google, Kismet from WordPress, CleanTalk is, uh, is a, a service that just does uh, spam and blocking, Drupal Steward from our own Drupal Association, and Cloudflare. So we'll take a look at these. <coughs> ReCAPTCHA is a, little, is a more sophisticated version of CAPTCHA. Uh, it will use, if it right, Google, most people visit Google or sites that have Google assets on them. Oh, and there goes my picture. Oh, it's back, okay. So uh, Google can uh, recognize people and uh, sometimes doesn't even have to present a challenge. You can just click the, I'm not a robot. Um, an update to the reCAPTCHA module that's being worked on will support the, the invisible CAPTCHA, where Google just recognizes this is a uh, legitimate user and doesn't present any challenge at all. But to, if Google does present a challenge, it'll be one of these challenges that you, you, we've all seen where there's a picture or something else to, uh, to demonstrate they were human. A Kismet is a really basic module. It just uh, you just uh, uh, install it. You uh, tell it what forms you want to protect, and and uh, then on the Kismet site you you get some uh, statistics about how much uh, it's uh, how much protection you're getting uh, things that that it's blocked to uh, um, attempt things that is allowed attempts uh, that's about all uh, all that that does so you just uh, spe choose specific forms to to protect uh, with the kismet but it's uh, i mean it's wordpress so it a lot it's used by lots of sites so it is uh, something i that uh, Probably works. I haven't used it myself. Uh, Anti-spam by CleanTalk is uh, the one that I, I used with this uh, client in the the uh, accounts receivable insur insurance brokers. And this one we installed, and it just solved the problem. Nothing gets through. It uh, it caught in a few months. It caught it identified one. Um, email address as a spammer that wasn't. Uh, Is it a paid service? Yeah, it's a paid service, um, $8 a year for the basic service. Um, you can uh, 
add $13 a year to get a few extra services. So the way this works is uh, it, instead of having a drop down where you select the forms, it has all the forms on a page and you put check boxes for the different kinds of forms you want to, to, to be uh, checked. Um, and uh, you can have um, uh, forms or submissions either go into a moderation or be blocked altogether or just allowed. It'll, uh, you can uh, say which roles you want to be um, checked by, by this uh, uh, spam blocking. Uh, check registrations, check web forms, contact forms. And then uh, something that um, that can be really helpful for denial of service attacks is what they call the spam firewall. And the way that works is if they, before Drupal boots up in the in the Drupal bootstrap, they check the IP address. And if it's an IP address that is uh, known to to produce spam and, or hacking, they get this. Instead, of, and Drupal, and and it's a 403 page. Uh, <coughs> Drupal doesn't uh, even uh, run a, after this, so it really cuts down the load on your site. Uh, you can click a human can click on this link to bypass it, and and it only lasts for three seconds. So you know, after three seconds, it disappears. So a legitimate user is not going to be blocked from your site to, just because they happen to be using a spammer's IP address. The, um, the one thing you've got to be uh, careful about is uh, enabling this on a site that filters cookies. Like I had tried to use this on a Pantheon site. And so the way they, the way they let u legitimate users bypass this uh, firewall page is uh, they set a cookie. It, in their browser. And if uh, that cookie gets filtered out by the CDN or, or Varnish, or, or then um, Drupal won't see that that cookie is set, and they'll, they won't be able to get past this. So you want to, you'd want to test this before you enable it to, for everybody. Otherwise, you can, might get some panic phone calls from your clients saying that they can't get through. And here's what uh, the Clean Talk service looks like on their admin page. You put in the site URL. They've got an access key you, you uh, put into Drupal. Um, and uh, then uh, here, if uh, you can tell it not to save approved requests for uh, data privacy, if, if, you're, uh, if users are saying not to save their, their options. And these are the add-ons you can get if, if you want to pay a little more than $8 a year. You can uh, let uh, share control over the account with uh, someone else. You can uh, enable message filtration using stop words. So sometimes not everything, not everything on on your site is an attack. Sometimes people are just being jerks. I real <laughs> this happened. I a few years ago I worked on the field and stream and outdoor life websites. I don't understand why people that are supposed to be just enjoying nature can are just trying to put so much awful stuff uh, in their comments and uh, have flame wars with each other. But you can, you can uh, identify the words that, that, that you want to block at using these uh, stop words. And you can also update the, uh, the message for the vi visitors on the spam firewall here. And uh, so here's uh, where I've uh, put in the, the list of stop words. So all of the, any message with these words just uh, automatically gets blocked or, or, uh, mo or uh, moderated. Uh, and uh, here's the anti-spam log. So you can, I'm looking at the denied list. So here I can uh, check and make sure that there hasn't been any um, legitimate messages blocked. I can also uh, change that to the approved, so I can make sure that all the approved messages were, were legitimate. So that's uh, Clean Talk, which, in my experience, has been great. Just solved the problem completely. Oops, and there goes my signal again. I wanted to talk about.
CDN. So can you manage multiple accounts on that admin? Or yeah. Yeah. You get three accounts for the $8, and if you want more accounts, uh, you can... Uh, yeah, you can uh, add uh, add more. And uh, I believe the... Yeah. So $8 per year. They also have a discount if you buy three years. Oh. So, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're talking about Cloudflare. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> All right. Cloudflare is one of those uh, um, content delivery networks that, uh, with a firewall built in so that uh, visitors to your site are checked before they, they hit your, your Drupal server. And so this is, this can be really help, helpful. It also has uh, some caching. So if your site goes down, it, it's able to keep serving pages for a while. The, so the one drawback to, to using a content delivery network is you, you don't have, if you're worried about privacy, you don't get, uh, you have to have the content delivery network able to decrypt messages from you, uh, the, the traffic between you and your users. So you can have your traffic to the content delivery network encrypted and from the content delivery network to your users, but you know, you've got somebody in the middle that is able to, to read things. So that is, is the one limitation. On the other hand, you set up your DNS to point to this content delivery network and uh, nobody is directly accessing your Drupal site. So content denial of service uh, is not a problem anymore because these content delivery networks are so big, there's nobody that can overwhelm them with traffic. Um, Drupal Steward is similar. It, um, it's also a content delivery network. I don't remember which one they've partnered with, but they've they built in a firewall that to, so that if there's any Drupal vulnerability that can be caught with a firewall, Drupal Steward will protect your Drupal site until you're able to, to do your security updates. And Cloudflare par Partners is also, is also a partner with Drupal Steward. I'm, so I'm not sure exactly how that works, so, so, but uh, but you might have be getting some of the Drupal Steward uh, protection in, in Cloudflare also. So those are the commercial services you can use. They're fa fairly affordable. Uh, Cloudflare has a free tier. Yeah. yeah so like Cloudflare is free too. And they have some cool stuff where you can add uh, the firewall that I use for blocking all uh, non-US Ah, yeah, you've got lots of configuration options yeah. with that. Free. <laughs> And then if you, if you are getting a denial of service attack or something like that, you can, they'll stand in front of it for you for free still. Yeah, right. So. It's still recording. It was only intimate before you got involved. Okay, let's see here. It's still recording. Hey, maybe it's, still maybe, still maybe that. Oh, yeah, no. I was holding it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, for those of you who are watching the recording, you don't know what we're going through here. But it's really interesting. Okay, we'll, we'll see intermittently the, the slides. All right, so it's great to have uh, these commercial uh, solutions, but it is possible, I mean, to put together uh, uh, these things uh, on our, as a community. The big thing is we can't uh, protect our sites uh, uh, as very effectively if we're trying to do it all self-contained because it takes time to identify the, these hackers and the types of attacks. So it, sharing the load with, with other sites makes a big difference. Uh, we do have a couple of, uh, of self-contained things uh, that used to work, like statistical spam filter. I used I had that on, on Drupal 8. It, uh, if you identify something a, as spam, it learns what, what spam is what, and uh, learns how to block it. 
Uh, but it, but it's always going to be more uh, effective if you do some if you do something that is uh, working with a network of others. So we have a couple of projects. We call one is stop forum spam, and this identifies email addresses that uh, are known to abuse uh, submit to, uh, um, spam uh, to forums. The other one is uh, Project Honeypot. Project Honeypot identifies IP addresses. So together, if you can get the, both of these working on your Drupal site, which was possible in Drupal 8, but, but we don't have the, the modules for them updated to Drupal 9, you could get fairly pretty effective uh, spam blocking. It, it, it's pretty much when I had Drupal 8 uh, with these installed, it's pretty equivalent to what you get with CleanTalk. Maybe a little more gets through because your site has to learn on its own. But uh, but you could do it for free, but we've got to contribute to make it happen because uh, these are weren't kept up to date. Now, uh, with Project Honeypot, you have a couple of uh, ways that you can uh, contribute, even if you're not a Drupal developer. You can uh, create a, an MX record in your DNS, a fake one. The, and you can give it to Project Honeypot, and and that will, and they'll set up their a uh, fake email server that uh, spammers can uh, can attack, and and it'll, it'll help them to to identify where spam comes from. Another thing you can do is uh, put in a a fake uh, URL in your site that Project Honeypot will provide you, and whenever a spammer visits it, Project Honeypot gets notified. And and uh, and spammers are are identified. So, uh, for actually taking advantage of these IP addresses, so you've got the uh, HTTP BL HTTP blacklist module that works with Project Honeypot. That needs to be updated to Drupal nine. So, opportunity to, to contribute. Um, for. And then we've got the stop forum spam client module that also needs to be updated to Drupal 9. So if you want to work, use the, the email lists that stop forum spam is gathering from all over and making available for free, some, you can uh, contribute by updating the stop forum spam client. Now, when I was working on the field and stream websites back W uh, in Drupal 6 days, we used a module called Abuse, which was really helpful, not just for spam, but for people being abusive to each other. Uh, it, we could identify accounts that, that generated a lot of abuse and needed to always be moderated. Um, we could identify abusive words that, that would uh, trigger moderation. Uh, IP addresses, um, email addresses, all, all of those those were managed in the abuse module, but it never got updated after Drupal 6. And unfortunately, there has never been, uh, nobody has ever gone to the work to produce a, a similar management tool for, for any other versions of Drupal. So another contribution opportunity, if you're interested in Preventing abuse on your site, that abuse module is uh, available, ready to, to be updated. So we get e enough contribution going, we can have a completely free solution to, and not require any of the, the commercial um, op options, and make this available to everybody. So. Any questions? Me. Does uh, Fastly offer anything? Fastly, is that a CDN? I've never used those. I, I haven't used it, but any CDN is going to be be helpful in, um, in preventing thing, certain things. Yeah. Fastly yeah. does have a firewall. Oh, okay. Yes. 
Does, <coughs> does Fastly have a free option? Yeah, I'll say I know with Cloudflare you can pay and get more features. So right. Right, and Cloudflare has added, been adding a lot of services that, that are free, yeah. uh, a lot of edge um, um, edge detector, services that you can. Some bot detection and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any anyone inspired to contribute to one of these projects? I look at one. I mean, I'll probably look for them. I'll take a picture of it to see. I think it's QBL. That's Brian. So just up the road from us. Oh, okay. He's retired. So it wasn't the only part of the DA. It's this be blacklist. Ah. Oh, in yes, he's retired. Yeah. Okay, that's what happened. Okay, it shouldn't be too hard to update. No, it's just a narrow market. <laughs> All right. Well, that was it. that's it for for um, tools for stopping spam and hackers. <laughs>